G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we are going to be flying out the F5E. This is probably the best plane of 2.7, and is really just, just bloody incredible. It is one of those planes that is almost good at everything that needs, to, or that a plane needs to be good at, and so you end up having a really easy time, to be honest. You basically just pack the best of Air RB and throw it into a package that is about as small as a MiG-19 with the power of something like the T2 or the uh, even even certain MiG-21s are going to really struggle against this thing. Of course, this thing is an 11.0, so you are only going to be seeing those uh, lower type MiG-21s, not quite the PFM and the F-13. You, you are going to be seeing the SMT and the MF. Um, and of course the BIS, because the BIS is probably going to be a pretty pretty close opponent to this type of plane. Now the F5 is very much the, uh, not budget MiG-21 BIS, but it is kind of analogous or similar to the MiG-21 BIS in its role in the team. So I would perhaps consider this a budget MiG-21 BIS, but budget MiG-21 BIS doesn't really give it the justice, though, so it doesn't really serve the, the, the name as well because this really isn't a budget plane as such unlike the uh, MiG-23 which is very much a budget Phantom being a Phantom but kind of cut down but this plane is only cut down in terms of its missile capability it only has two missiles but it certainly makes up for that with everything else and I'm not really talking about avionics here because this plane is a bit of a dogfighter it's not exactly uh, a plane that is designed around its avionics, or at least it it's, doesn't play around its avionics in War Thunder. Uh, and so what you're going to be doing a lot is actually dogfighting. You're one of the, if not the last dogfighter in War Thunder, as in pure dogfighter first and uh, missile interceptor combat type last. And for me, that's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to have a plane like this once more in War Thunder. And of course the F5E is uh, looking beautiful. Look at that camo. They, they just have so many nice camos, and uh, this plane is a real hit, honestly. So, we are in a mixed battle here, and mixed battles have been so common with the uh, way R60s and the MiG-23 and Russian teams and flares are going at the moment, so I think a lot of people are just naturally gravitating over to those American teams, which um, creates a bit of a mixed battle situation. So, that's what we're getting here, and that's what we have to deal with. So, I'm just going to go and uh, just ignore a missile, because... It's, it's an A9J. It's going to get what I want. And uh, MiG-21 MF, unfortunately no dice, but that's okay. I'm starting to hear a couple planes, and uh, MiG-19 PT, I'm going to go below, and I'm going to cut underneath this F5 and try and scoop up a little kill. It looks like he's not pulling as hard as he probably could, and uh, he ends up pulling himself into a critical hit, which is very nice for me. Of course, the 20mm gun's very, very similar to that on the uh, F100, from what I can gather, I'm not exactly sure where they come from. Someone let me know in the comment section below. But uh, I'll tell you what, this MiG-19 doesn't know where this AIM-9J is coming from, that's for sure. Beautiful, easy kill, and uh, unfortunately no dice there on the uh, F-4C, but that's okay. Now, the F-5E that I uh, shot earlier before gone, has gone down, and unfortunately no kill there. But definitely an assist is worth taking home, and uh, I'm now basically a pure dogfighter. So I'm looking for those clusterfucks, those uh, furballs, if you will. Going to avoid the Nigel boy because he's one of my boys, so uh, good on you Nigel, thanks for not going for me. I really appreciate it when uh, people don't sort of run after me and chase me to the ends of the map because they know me. I sincerely appreciate that, but uh, I also sincerely appreciate people that, uh, you know, just, just play their plane so easy like that. MiG-21 BIS not even looking for me and the 20 mils kind of finish off a little bit of that work. Now, the MiG-21 MF in a dogfight, well, he's got the AOA, so he's going to pull and he's going to sort of get that original turn on me. Of course, the MiG-21 BIS is going to go down, and now I'm in a kind of spiral fight. Now, what I want is for the MiG-21 to either be energy trapped, because uh, they make too many turns and lose all of their speed, or alternatively, I might want him to, uh, you know, get a shot from someone else. And that's a beautiful kill set up. Very, very nice kill setup, and I'm, I'm just pulling in the assists here. If I didn't have so many great teammates, well, I would probably have an ace by now. So I, I really love getting uh, high kill games, but honestly, a couple of assists is not too bad either. I'll tell you what, having all these high kill games and always focusing on these high kill games is, is really good uh, and really nice because you're sort of striving for excellence, but uh, at the same time, remembering that assists are also pretty good and you know, I've kind of forgotten about that. I've kind of 
strive for the uh, aces and realised that, you know, sometimes it's just, just better to have a good team and have lots of victories in a row. And that's exactly what the FIV is having at the moment. It's just so damn uh, powerful and so damn prominent that it's, uh, it, it's just, there's just no breaks. No breaks on the rape train. It is just so goddamn powerful that it is absolutely dominating all of these battles. Now, there are a couple of ways to fight this thing. The first way is uh, with the MiG-23 and those R-23Ts, but of course your F5E needs to not be paying attention or uh, not have flares or be going fairly slow. Uh, and that's to allow the R-23T to uh, basically get itself on target properly. Now, in this case, you could potentially take them out, but of course, if they are not paying attention, then you are going to be struggling. The second way is to out-energy these things. Now, they do lose a fair bit of energy in turns after sustained dogfights. So, if you do, if you know that this plane does not have any missiles on it, uh, you can energy trap it by going into a vertical, and you've basically got them screwed. And this is where the sort of budget aspect of the uh, MiG-21 BIS comes in. So, whilst you don't have the the sheer energy retention of the F5, or so, sorry, the sheer energy retention of the BIS, you do have some decent handling and some decent turning. So if you were to get into a horizontal fight with a MiG-21, you would probably win. But if you get into a vertical fight, uh, you should just bugger out of there as quick as you can because those types of fights are basically down to the Russians. The Russians and their energy retention and their sort of ability to vertical fight is, is just incredible. And so you really don't want to be pulling up against those types of things. It is really just incredible that... Uh, the type of thing that you can do with uh, with a sort of Russian plane like that. Now, moving on to the next match here, I'm going to skip forward a touch, and of course we are on Sicily. So we're looking at enemies here at high altitude, and I'm just waiting for them to pop in. Now, this is the kind of spotting system stuff I'm talking about um, when I say that I think that there should be a little bit of an increase in the spotting system. A lot of people have suggested maybe uh, a bit of a cone instead of a, a ball, of or, or like a sort of radius, dedicated radius of, of spotted enemies. Um, I, I think that would be okay. I would certainly be open to adjustments to my uh, suggestions and theories. And of course, if I'm wrong at any uh, sort of stance or any sort of point, uh, I would absolutely love to be corrected or uh, perhaps given a better uh, suggestion. So our first shot here of the MiG-23 has gone beautifully as always. It is a MiG-23 and it is absolutely garbage. Well, it it's not absolute garbage, but it is definitely not that great. Uh, but we're going to be sort of looking for other targets here that are maybe slow, maybe not paying attention, and that is where the F5 really shines. It doesn't shine in those high-speed fights because all the other planes can either go faster, pull more energy, climb higher, or do other things like that. So you're going to be looking to fight enemies that are sort of in your element and fighting in, on your terms. Now, this F4F is uh, not fighting on my terms, he's fighting on his terms, he's running away, and of course he has enough speed to dodge my missiles, and so I don't get that kill with missiles. It's a bit of a waste if an enemy is running from you, but if, if an enemy is turning from you, or uh, turning with an enemy, for example, sorry, an ally, for example, you are absolutely able to absolutely just... Mwah, missiles man these aim 9 js are fantastic do you know what also is fantastic mig 23s that don't use the maximum sweep of their wings and rely on that uh auto sweep and this is probably what's gotten this mig 23 killed here because he's very very slow and of course the mig 23 being a budget phantom is uh you know showing just how budget it is i'm going for a little bit of a spray i managed to knock off a couple of pieces of his plane and uh, i'm gonna go in for a little bit more so the only reason why I'm chasing him is because I am closing the gap, and I know that I'm closing the gap, and I'm going to close the gap quickly. And that's given me the opportunity to get myself my second kill, despite wasting that uh, second missile there. So, next up we have a J35D, and the J35D is looking towards me, so I thought I might go for it, because the J35 can outturn me, and of course if I get into a multiple dogfight situation, the J35 is something that can potentially outturn me if I have to make uh, adjustments in my in my flight for something else say like a phantom or a mirage or another mig and i get a nice critical hit which basically renders this plane very very struggly it's very tough when you are heavily damaged in the j35 and so i've managed to basically get myself a really strong advantage and because he's been critically hit his uh, wing surfaces are damaged and i managed to shear that little other bit of the wing tip off giving me the perfect extra kill. It's it's just nice. I like it. Anyway, 
Moving on, we've got another MiG-23M, but this one is a little bit more of a smart cookie because he's absolutely getting out of there, going for the speed, and not going to bullshit with uh, turning. Sometimes I like to give it a go in the MiG-23. I'll just straighten out the wings, lower the speed, and try and sit behind something like an F5. You can kind of do it, but honestly, in a sustained dogfight, and if you have multiple allies around like this guy does, then it's not really worth it. So I'm going to quickly spray the FGR2. The FGR2 is smarter than that. He gets out of the way. And uh, I'm going to look at trying to dogfight against these guys. If I can potentially get myself a little bit of a kill with the remaining ammunition that I have, I can start to wear down the numbers. Because remember, ladies and gentlemen, I am now the last member of my team alive. I have to carry against three or four of these enemies here, and it is going to be really, really tough. So the Phantom is going to start swinging around for me, and the MiG-23 looks like he might be in it for a dogfight. And of course, I'm going to be trying to follow. Maybe the MiG-23 does not have his wings folded, and maybe I can just catch him a little bit more. But the FGR2, somehow, somehow, his wings just fall off. You know, the front sometimes just falls off. But you know what else falls off? My speed and my uh, and my, my nuts when the MiG-23 decides he wants to come for a runway strike. So as soon as I put the plane into a stop, I am going to J out of that plane. No kill for you. And of course, because I'm repairing already, it does give me the option to respawn. So with that out of the way, we're able to get back into the fight. And of course, the MiG-23 is no longer able to strafe us, which is exactly what I wanted. So we can already see that the airfield AA, I think this is the new AA as well the new surface-to-air missiles and the M247s, it's not doing its job, apparently. And that might be because of the altitude, but I would kind of expect maybe at this altitude you would get surface-to-air missiles firing off. Maybe you would just get some, some, some more accurate stuff. I would prefer that sort of ground-level type attack to be countered by things like the M247s or, or guns of some sort, and um, it's kind of not happening. So... It, whilst it sounds great that we're getting like surface-to-air missiles and M247s and, and Rolands and all that sort of stuff gu uh, guarding our airfields, it doesn't make a difference because at the end of the day, you still get the same result of inconsistency. And that's what I would really like to see, a bit more consistency. For me, if War Thunder made itself more consistent, so I know at a certain time, if I do a certain move, I will get a certain result against a certain plane. Um, you know, you learn your plane, you learn the ins and outs of your, your aircraft, and uh, you know that if you, for example, boom and zoom against a zero, then you're going to have a better chance against it. You know that if you do X, Y, and Z, then you're going to get a uh, nice kill. Unfortunately, the Roland stole my damn kill. He's, he's, he's eating my beans, and it's made me very upsetty spaghetti. But you know what? That's one enemy down, and that's something that I can't really complain about. The MiG-21 Biss has also decided that he wanted to come and strafe me while I was on the runway and gets a taste of the Roland. So now he's opening up because... Uh, I don't know. I guess this is what happens when you get greedy. But at the same time, I've repaired, I've rearmed, I don't need to be protected by this because I'm at speed and I'm out there able to do my job. So whilst it would have been nice to have the surface-to-air missiles earlier, now that I'm up and running and don't need them, they're there. And for me, I found that a little bit odd. I found it a tiny bit frustrating. And for me, it just doesn't quite add up. And I would really like to see that change to something that is a little bit more predictable, something that is a little bit more straightforward or, you know, calculatable. I, something that I can just, I can just do something and then it will absolutely be guaranteed. So if I wanted to go and land, it would absolutely protect me. And if I was up and at speed, it would absolutely just not work. So, so that would allow me to get kills. But in this case here, we have an FGR2 who uh, was from earlier. He's overshot. And of course, M9Js don't really care about flares, it seems. Um, I don't really know why, but I'll tell you what, I'll take it. A nice carry, for four kills, and of course, we managed to carry against three enemies. Pretty nice, but uh, at the end of the day, it's a little bit of a sad victory, because it tells me that there are a couple of things in War Thunder that I reckon could be tweaked and could be made really, really cool. But of course, the F5 is the vehicle that is carrying us all through this mayhem, and it has done absolutely fantastically. This is a plane that is incredibly strong and incredibly brilliant and of course is absolutely worth every second of the grind at the moment. Sure, it may change later, but I tell you what, the consistency and the results that I'm getting in this plane are absolutely phenomenal. And this is just like the F5A, but better. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. I sincerely appreciate you spending your time here. Anyway, that's enough from me. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.